Welcome to Dracina Wines Podcast. Our wines plus your moments equals great memories. I'm your host, Lori, and this is a podcast about all things wine. Happy Monday. Happy oh. Jack here. How are you doing? Oh, I'm hanging in there, you know, going a little nuts. Yeah. I forgot about this until my phone uh, rang. I thought we did this already because I was online with you last, last week. Last week. Yeah. Yeah. We, maybe we're seeing too much of each other. I don't know. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Although, yeah, and I was with you Sunday. I was online with you Monday. Yeah. Yeah. We've been together a lot this past week. <laughs> I know. Considering we live pretty far away, that's a lot of get a lot of togetherness. Yeah. How's that Tim Tam Tim Tam Slam? Slam. That Tim I did a video. I made a video of it yesterday to to promote it a little bit. So for anybody who's watching or listening, we learned um, at Old York Cellars this past weekend what a Tim Tam Slam is. And um, technically it started with how to eat the cookie, or, or they call, I don't think they like calling it a cookie, um, uh, with coffee. But the Australians, gotta love the, gotta love the Australians, they changed it to drinking it with port. So you'll have to come back to Debbie's and my social media um, blog post coming up soon to see exactly how cool a Tim Tam Slam is. But, um, you know, I... I'm kind of addicted to it. I want to get going. You know, you know how I love sabering. Now I want to Tim Tam everything, you know? And I know you were hesitant on port. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I was actually, I was surprised by the port because it wasn't syrupy. And that's what I don't like um, about port. Um, but that's all coming up in a future yeah. blog post. Yeah. I don't know. Now we're talking about Jakir. Jakir. So welcome to Wine for Bet Street. And the letter of the day is J, and we're going to see Elmo, hopefully. Do you have Elmo with you? I do. There we go, and here he is. <laughs> Our mascot, There's Elmo. Elmo. And Elmo is here to discuss Jack here today. And I um, hunted around for my bottle of Jack here. Uh, it wasn't that easy to find uh, a bottle here, a bottle there, but there's not, there wasn't a large selection of them. I ended up with a choice of two. How about you? Well, I had had Jack here. And this is funny. I ordered wine from this place, Garista in Washington state. And last year, I think it was, I had ordered, you know, I'd seen, and I'm always looking for stuff that is different that I can't find here. And I had ordered a bunch of them. Um, Jack here and a um, bunch of the wines from the Savoy region. Al Altice, is it called? A-L-T-E-S-E. -E. I don't know. I had no idea what I was ordering, but I, what I will tell you is when I drank them, I loved them. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta research this. I gotta research this, but you know, time takes over and unless sometimes you have a reason to research, you know, I mean, I really wanted to, but and I had three bottles of it and they, it was, they were oh. great. Wow. But, um, and they were in a, a tall bottle. So when it came time yes. to buy a bottle for, for this, I was kind of stuck because nowhere down here, um, has a selection of wine. And um, when I was looking back at home up in uh, New York, I couldn't find it either. So I actually ordered it from Wine Chateau. Oh, okay. And I, I had, I didn't have a choice. I, there was just one. Right. Yeah. So that actually leads me into our sponsor. So 
We have sponsored by Wink, which is W-I-N-C, and they have a whole bunch of wines that you can go in and you can um, order from. This wine is not from Wink. They did not have a Jack here, um, but they do have, um, you know, a lot of, they have Cabernet, they had, they had a Nebbiolo, um, they, you know, they have Petite Syrah, uh, lots of choices. And basically it is super simple and super fun for you to do. All you have to do is log on to their website and you take this little profile quiz with fun little questions about your, you know, what you like, what you don't like, what you eat, what you don't eat. And by them and by you answering those questions, they are going to give you a palette profile. So they pop up after you answer the questions. It takes like less than five minutes. They pop up with four suggested wines for you. And you can either choose those wines or not choose those wines and go pick whatever you want. Um, and then if you do four bottles into your car, they're going to cover the shipping for you. So, I mean, it's a pretty pretty awesome deal, right? There's no membership fees. There's no obligation. You can skip any month um, that you want. So you get four bottles this month, but you don't want them next month. You can just put it on pause until you're ready to come back to it. Wines start at about $13 a bottle. So it's pretty darn cheap, Not bad. right? Albarino, Senso, Gewurz, Malbec, um, lots and lots of choices. So if it sounds interesting to you, all you need to do is Go to try wink, which is T R Y W I N C dot com forward slash winefabet. And if you put in that website, you are going to get $20 off of your first order. So that's going to give you four bottles shipped to your door for about 30 bucks. Can't go wrong, right? No, you can't go wrong with that. Can't go wrong. I love it. I mean, I, I use it. It's pretty cool. Um, I've tasted two of the bottles that they've sent. They're both they're both decent. I like them. And you know, thirteen bucks, shipping included, yeah. to your door, kind of a no brainer, yeah. right? Can't good way to explore. Good way to explore. Um, I just was hearing. Um, I think it was Martin Redmond who uh, just got into the Century Club. Um, okay. Which is, you know, you keep track of the different varietals. I have to do that. I, I, I started to, and then I, you know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was like, you know what, that's kind of cool. And with Winefabet Street, with us keep trying all these different, you know, varieties that we're doing, I'm like, I've got to I've got to do this. It's kind of cool. I have a sheet right here on my desk somewhere on that. But yeah. yeah. I think it's pretty cool. So, I mean. I, I think that I'm going to start looking into what it is. Um, some of the wines I pick up have like five different varieties in it, and apparently they count. So if it's a blend, oh, really? yeah, know that. yeah, if it's a field blend, you can count it. So I'm going to go for it. All right? Jeez, I might be there. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, but we are here for Jack here. Okay. So I'm Debbie Giaquindo. I'm known as the Hudson Valley Wine Goddess. I'm a wine blogger, a wine writer. I own a co-owner of Happy Bitch Wines. I'm an author of Taffy in the Hudson Valley, which is a book about day trips and weekend itineraries um, traveling through the Hudson Valley. Um, March 30th, I'm opening a restaurant in Stone Harbor, New Jersey called Kitchen 330. Um, I've got two kids and two dogs, and uh, <laughs> I'm going kind of nuts now, and I probably left something out, but it's all yours. And I'm Lori. Uh, my husband Mike and I own Dracina Wines, which is a boutique winery in Paso Robles. We specialize in award-winning Cabernet Franc, and we produce a rosé of Syrah now. And our big news is we just started a wine club. So we, um, you know, you can join our wine club. It is very different um, because, you know, Draco is on our label, but Vegas was getting kind of jealous. So we decided to give him the wine club. So the wine club is called Chalk Club, which is perfect because it's March Madness right now. And when it's chalk, it means that you're betting on all the favorites. And we're, we're betting that we're one of your favorite Cab Francs and Rosés. So head over to DracinaWines.com to find out. We actually are giving a progressive discount. So you start off at 15% off, but for each year you parlay, get it? Parlay? Ah, okay. Each year you parlay, you go up 5%, up to 25% off all of your wines. Right? And we're giving, and it's $15 flat shipping, and 
we're going to give you $15 as a house bet for your second shipment. So we'll cover that second shipment for you. So again, head over to dracinawines.com and check out Chalk Club. Uh, we are going into general characteristics, but can we can we um, can we show our wine and can we drink so I can drink while you're yeah. talking? You know what? I'm dying for a glass. I haven't eaten anything today but a salad. <gasps> I had one of my um, my Costco burritos. That's my meal of the day. I haven't eaten anything. That's too busy making a chalkboard menu. <laughs> this is what I've got. All right. So this is what I've got. Happy wine for Best Street. Yes. Happy wine for Best Street. Slancha. All right. General characteristics. Okay. So the general characteristics of Jakir. Is that the way you pronounce it? You're really good with that. That is the way I'm seeing. That's the way I'm seeing to pronounce it. Yes. So this is a picture of the Jakir grape. Um, the Jakir grape is a grape that has great um, acidity. So if you are an acid head, which I am, um, you will like this grape. Um, even, you know, it grows in a cool climate because this is located up in the French Alps towards uh, Switzerland, the Swiss border. But even like if it happens to be a warm year, which can affect the acidity of the grape, um, the wine actually never gets above 12%, and the yield on the grapes can be very high. So the aromas of the grape, you can get green apple, fresh cut grass, some peach. I get a little fresh cut grass. What do you get? You get anything? This is apple. Apple? Yeah, this is... Yeah, this is a lot of apple. I can I can kind of see fresh cut grass. I can see I can see grass, but it this is like lots and lots of apple. And I got a little green apple. Um, they also take on the aromas of the mountainous region. Um, so you might get like um, think of a beautiful day on the ski slopes, and you're in the lodge, and you just step out to go to the lift, and you take that deep breath. Of the, you know the fresh mountainous air. Sometimes you will get aromas of that, like the clean crispness, which yeah. goes in touch with the acidity. So I'm talking with my hands. Yes. <laughs> uh, so the wine, I was so looking for a picture that I had taken, and I know I took it of the what I had. Um, drank last year right. and I was looking for a picture of it because it was really um, you know pale yellow and I couldn't find one I don't know what happened to it but anyway the wine made from Jack here is pale yellow in color um, it's somewhat of a medium bodied wine um, you'll get fl uh, flavors of white flowers some pear green apple white peach grapefruit it also will pick up a little bit of the minerality of the soil that it's grown in so you really get um, a taste of uh, the terroir. So there might be a little bit of flintness um, within that, you know, clean, refreshing acidity. Um, also, the wine is, is really good consumed within the first three years of the vintage. So I think that's it. Oh, all righty. Yes, I am getting that's a white grapefruit. apple. It's uh, not a lemon. It's a, white, it's a white grapefruit and a pink grapefruit. Pink grapefruit. I couldn't find a really good picture of a white grapefruit. This... Um, I'm getting pear and peach also. So this is rather typical then of mm -hmm. what I should yeah. expect. Yeah, me too. Um, all right. So on to the history of Jack here. Um, there's going to be a little bit of overlap because, well, it just isn't life if there isn't, right? That's right. Um, okay. So Jack here is actually... Jakir is the Savoie's most widely planted grape variety. It actually accounts for 50% of all of the plantings. It is produced as an early drinking low alcohol and a very lively wine, which is that acidity that you were talking about. And as you said, you can expect uh, flavors to range from white flowers, to, uh, which are floral, to the fruity pear, white peach, grapefruit, and the mineral and flintiness. So the Savoie is a French department in the 
Auvergne, Rhone Alps region in eastern France. As a wine region, though, Savoie consists of many isolated subregions and plots of vineyards scattered across the French departments. So there's the different departments are the Savoie, the Haute Savoie, the SR, and the Onne. And the Savoie neighbors Switzerland to the east, Jura to the north, Boogie to um, uh, and across the river is the Rhone River. Uh, so it's got a lot of kind of more famous, I think, uh, um, neighbors other than the Boogie. I've never heard of that. Have you? No, never. Yeah. Um, Nick, where are you? I need you back again. <laughs> um, so I've never heard of that one, but they do say it's little known. Um so it's got a lot of popular neighbors around it. Okay. Jack, Jackier originates in Savoie and is grown there mostly exclusively with a few acre uh, hectares in Portugal. DNA analysis is not complete on the parentage, but the current uh, research suggests that Jackier is one of the many offspring of Guy Blanc. So, so the the other is unknown, and they have gone out on the limb here and have suggested that the other grape is of French origin. I don't know. That's really stretching the, you know, that's going out on the limb, guessing where it's coming from. All right. So the uh, so it is the offspring of Gouet Blanc and of uh, some other French origin grape. How's that for beautiful, right? That is nice. Uh, Jakir uh, grows among, and this is, I absolutely had no clue about this. It's actually, the history of Jakir is actually really, really sad. Um, Jakir grows among and on massive limestone blocks. And these limestone blocks are the result of a, what, what are a result of a month-long intense rainstorm. So on November 24th, which happens to be my grandfather's birthday, um, in 1248, so long before my grandfather, uh, so in 1248, the giant slabs of limestone that were on top of this mountain actually gave way because it was raining for a month. And the rocks the, fell down uh, seven kilometers into the valley below, landing completely burying five villages all of their inhabitants, and all of the livestock. Wow. Right? So in the end, there was a cliff face that was about 900 meters high, but nothing lived or grew there for decades. And this is known as the Apremont or Bitter Mountain. So the rock slides still occur today, with actually the last one being on May in uh, 2016. So wow, that was it, pretty years ago. Yeah. Right. So after the tragedy, they actually renamed the mountain Granier, which is after one of the villages that were lost below. So the villages are the Conyon, the uh, Saint Andre, Saint Perange, uh, Verrier, and and the uh, Granier. Um, so that is now Mount Granier after that village. Jenkins. Uh, Jenkins uh, Robinson, I never know how to say her name. Did I say it right? Janice. Yeah, but it's, it's J-A-N-C-I-S. So forgive me all, you know, psalms out there and everything. Um, she gives the earliest mention um, as 1868 uh, for Jack here. Um, however, there are people who say that the first mention of Jack here was actually back before the limestone... Uh, Rockfall uh, before the collapse of uh, Mount Grenier. But I couldn't find any reference in writing that it actually took place or the first reference of Jakir was before that landslide. The, everything seems to me um, 1868. And it is at the, the first document that is found is from a French ampelographer, which is actually an expert in the study and classification of grape varieties. Um, his name was Pierre Tokchan, and 
he actually described the vineyards and vines in the hilly region known as the Abi, Abim de Mayans. And he actually mentions Jakir back uh, then. Um, so it has been growing in the uh, Kondreyu vineyards, but it is actually not allowed to be in any wine in the Kondreyu Appalachian de Origin Protege. So it's grown there, but it's not allowed to be in any of the wines if they want the AOP designation. After some increased plantings in 1980s and 90s, it has remained a constant area, uh, constant uh, hectares, has been uh, pretty constant at about 1,000 hectares across France. Uh, the varietal is actually generally reproductive, uh, so it is um, one of those grape varieties that you want to make sure that you um, keep track of because it will get very green. The, uh, the leaves will take over, and then when the leaves take over, the vine goes out of balance. Uh, it is also uh, an early budding uh, variety, so that can be a problem also. Uh, so it ripens in mid to late in the season and gives the best results when the canopy is well pruned. So again, everything goes back to vine balance. You want to make sure that um, there's enough energy going into the vine to support the fruit that it's growing and that you don't want all the greenery to take up all of that energy. This is um, a lovely picture by uh, France. It's a website and it shows you can kind of see the effervescent in the bottom of it, uh, which is yeah. pe uh, petulance and um, or petulance. And mine definitely has it. Does yours have it? No, but I don't have a, I have a stemless flask. Oh, okay. Yeah, mine, mine so definitely, have, definitely and has I, some. Like, and I have to tell you, I don't have a white wine glass. I just grabbed the first glass I got. I just, okay. <laughs> I had to put my wine in the freezer because I yeah. forgot to chill it. So I'm batting a thousand here. Happy Monday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, the last bit of it is, um, so as I said earlier, uh, Jack, uh, Jack here uh, makes up more than half of all the grape plantings in Savoie. And as you said, you can expect a very light pale yellow with aromas and flavors of white flowers. As I said, you can expect to see the petulance uh, or the effervescence and you can feel it on the tongue. And that typically tells you right off the bat that it was aged on lees. So I'm guessing sometimes it's not, sometimes it is. But the aging on the leaves is, is uh, what tends to give it the effervescence. And um, Jakir is also one of the lead varieties in the new Cremant de Savoie Appellation, which was only introduced back in 2015. So Jakir on its own must account for 40% of the blend or for 60% of the blend if it contains no Altise. So another six complementary varieties are allowed with a maximum of 20% red varieties. So to me, that's a lot of hodgepodge to become to become uh, an apple. Like, I, I didn't really understand how you can call it a jackier if it's only 40% of, uh, of a blend. So they're saying it's at least 40%, but... I guess just to put the designation of that appellation on there, you have to have at least 40%, but you're not necessarily claiming that it is a Jakir wine. Does that make sense? I'll tell you that Altice is pretty good too, because that's what I got too. Yeah. Altice, they're really crisp and acidic. And that is that is what I love. That is what I love. Even a wine person can have no idea what they're drinking and not have the time to research it but they know that they like it. Yep, yep. And as I say all the time, drink what you like. Don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. That's right. That's right. right. So what? So let's see your bottle again. What are you drinking? And tell us about your wine. I am drinking a Vinda, where's my thing? A Vinda Savoy. Okay. Um, Jean, Jean Jex, which is Jacques Jean. Um, And it's produced by Eugene Carroll and Phil's. No, come on, Eugene. Yeah, 
you got the same one? No, I'm just saying Eugene, it's French. Eugene? Eugene, E-U-G-E-N-E, with the apostrophe on the E. <sighs> All right. So I, I, when I was in um, Burgundy, I should have asked what the fills mean, F-I-L-S, oh, after I don't a know. name. Because there's other, a lot of names isn't, are that. Isn't that like an of? Like, I don't know. Like Lord William of whatever. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Or actually, John, John, John J, John Q, J I O N, this word that I can't pronounce. John J, I'm guessing. That's the Arctic area. That is an area. Okay. Oops, as I break the glass. Um, at, in the region where the, the grapes are grown. So how about you? So I am drinking, um, see, my my guy's name is Jean-Pierre. Now that's more <laughs> along the lines of what I'm drinking. Jean-Pierre, it feels. So there's that feels again. Yeah. Um, and uh, 2016 Cuvée Gastronomic Abim. Yeah, mine's a 2016 as well. So an Abim. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to say a beam is an area. Yes. Yes. So is John. John. John, Yes. Yes. So I'm just going to say I am 32% fluent in French now, according to Duolingo. And I don't know what Phil Phil's is. They haven't, that that little darn owl has not taught me what Phil's is. So (laughs) maybe I have to get a little bit more than 32% fluent. Um, but, uh, so my, I'm going to pour myself a little bit more cause I've already drank half of a glass I am too. and it's always so good to hear that noise. So mine's a family run, uh, winery. How about yours? Mine is also, except he is very big, <laughs> but it I'm is really family. Like small. So, um, I'll go. So, uh, okay. my guy, uh, Gilbert Perrier, or um, I'm sorry, Jean Pierre Effiel, 2016, uh, was actually the winery was founded in 1853. And Gilbert Perrier and his son are actually the fifth and sixth generation to make wine in this region. So, the domain has slowly expanded over the generations but they are strict on their quality. Um, and, you know, they say that's their priority. Um, they are a leading Savoie producer with 21 hectares under vine. Vines of uh, vines for the whites are mostly planted on clay limestone and the reds on granite and clay limestone. And they have, uh, the vines have a southeastern exposure near the city of Chambéry, and that is in Savoie. Uh, All of their wines undergo manual harvest with gentle pneumatic pressing and temperature-controlled fermentation around 20 degrees Celsius. So they are pretty strict. That's that's, um, pretty... Because I think that there's quite a bit of uh, um, uh, mechanical harvesting uh, going on, but they are manual. Uh, Most of the wines complete malolactic fermentation to a lower acidity and avoid the secondary fermentation in bottle, which I found rather interesting because their their cork, which is synthetic, which mine was too. I have mine. Which is you don't see that too frequently anymore, but you can. Um, It says mise in bottle. I'm like. What are you? What are you doing in bottle? It's not. It's not going through a second fermentation. Yeah. Well, I don't. I, I'm so confused because you're not going through a second fermentation, and that's usually what you see with that, right? Um, but anyway. My cork's got a number on it. Does your cork have a number on it? Yes. Yes. A, a long number. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to look that up. Uh, Vinota zero two one. Oh wait, it's the same thing. Wait, wait, wait. What's what's your number? Oh, I feel like zero we're doing a lottery. Two, 
0217-527-5079. Okay, so 0217, I wonder if that is bottling date? Oh, mine is vino of, bottling date. It's got to be. They bottled in February. Okay, mine's a 16. Mine's a 2016. Bottling date. Could have bottled February of 2017. Oh, 17. Right. And then mine's so 9998, which I don't know what that would correlate to. 5079. So maybe it's there. Yeah, that's got to be bottling date. Um, I don't know. I have to look that up. But I, I was very confused by Museum Bautil because uh, well, I don't get that. Um, anyway, so as I said, um, they avoid secondary fermentation. So the cork is kind of confusing me. Um, the wine shows light, dry, alpine profile, lean fruits, high acids. Uh, it is considered one of the best uh, jacquiers to grow in the region because it's a crew village. Um, there's three crew villages and a, a Abim is one of them. Appermont and Cruet is the other two. So Abim is located just about 50 miles uh, away from the Swiss and Italian borders. So it's sandwiched there. And less than 100 miles west of the Alps from Turin. So Abim is actually in the shadow of the Alps. And Gilbert Perrier and his son take special care to extract the most flavor from this actually cool weathered fruit. So the wines are young, they're youthful, they're fruity, they're brisk, they're acidic. There's, you know, not too much not to like about it. Um, and my bottle was regular price $12 on sale for $9.99. Oh, you got a good deal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think minus 15. Yeah. So, you know, it is it is a dry wine. It's medium bodied, like you said. High acidity. Definite um, apple on the nose. A little bit more citrus as it sat out a little bit. Um, minerals and peach and the grapefruit. It's there. Pretty much everything you put on yeah. that is on here. So, kudos. Thanks. So mine, he's somewhat of a small producer. It's um, from in the hamlet of, I know I'm not pronouncing this right, John Go, um, in the Savoy region, which is on the left bank of the Rhone River. Um, the family runs uh, 59 acres. They're planted on the slopes of the Chavez Mountain, which is also known as a Hot Mountain. Um, they've been um, in business six generations since 1830. Uh, when World War II ended, um, Celestine Carroll, Eugene's father, he returned from captivity. Um, so I, you know, he was in captivity and he returned and he took up um, on the farm. It wasn't vines, um, it was cattle and grain. And in 1970, when Eugene took over from his dad, they started. He started to repurpose the farm and started to specialize in, in you know, grow some grapes. So in 1975, they only had seven acres of uh, grapes, and in 1990, by 1990, they developed um, 23. In 1994, um, Oliver, Eugene's son, joined his parents, and um, up in 1977. That doesn't, I'm looking at my notes, and that is just not right. In 2008, they were up to 44 acres. Um, the soil is a chalk marl, which kind of looks like little pebbles. Um, vineyard, um, their vineyards benefit from 1,800 hours of sunlight a year. And they have, because they're on um, the Rhone, and they're also on Borget Lake, um, they have a little microclimate, which really helps them. And uh, very steep slopes, so it's hand harvested. Um, so that's just a little bit of information on on them. So they've been in business for for quite quite a while. Um, so this particular wine that's in my glass, let's see, um, it, the soil is calcareous. Cal calcareous. Cal 
I don't really, really know that because Paso has a lot of calcareous soil, a lot of sand, and we have a winery called Calcareous. Oh, really? Yeah. So I got to do my math here because I didn't do it. I'll tell you how many productions. It was three, one, two hundred. So there's 12 cases divided by 12. 2,600 cases of this was made. Oh. 90% um, of it is hand harvested. 10% is machine harvested. Um, they use, um, once it's picked, it immediately goes in the hydraulic press. Um, it gets separated from the, um, separated, uh, low temperature alcohol fermentation in stainless steel tanks, which allows it to retain its aroma. Um, it's aged surly on the leaves until bottling. So, and pretty much, um, I just, uh, you know, I just love crisp. Nice crisp wine. I even get, I swear, a little bit of that mountainous um, aromas. Maybe that's because it's supposed to snow here in the next <laughs> two days as we welcome. I kind spring. of, um, what is it? I should know this from botany. Um, like this, there's a term for sap. Um, for, for, for sap. Uh, like if you take a pine needle and you break the pine needle open, oh, sap. there's a sap. That's what I'm getting now. It's like, I don't, but I'm going to, oh my God, my biology is like going out my brain right now. Um, but it's, it's, it reminds me of the sap of a pine tree. Okay. Um, I don't have that. I definitely, I definitely have cut grass. Yeah. My, mine is, yeah. And it's going to, I'm going to wake up at like 3 a.m. this morning with that damn word in my head. It's going to wake me up for what it is, but. That's, it's, that's, I'm usually up at three, so you can text me. Okay. <laughs> I usually wake up at three. So this I get, I definitely get green apple. Yeah. Are you getting the white flower? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And I get white grapefruit on the finish. I will tell you, though, as it warms up, because this I just poured it, it's pretty cold. Because it was in your as freezer? <laughs> I do get more what? Because it was in your freezer. It was in my freezer, and as I'm, and I'm doing the talk boards, I'm like, oh shoot, I gotta get that out. It's too cold. Um, as it warms up, the pear, I get a little bit of pear. Because right. my first pour, I got a, as it sat here, I did get a little yep. bit more of pear. Yeah, there's. So I really like I really like this wine. I like it. I do. And at nine ninety nine, it's, you know, it's definitely a go back and buy some more. Um, this, and I'll tell you, I would drink this. It's, when I ski, I haven't skied since I moved down here, but because um, I have no one to ski with. Um, I'll, oh, I gave up my skis. Never mind. I sold my skis oh, I when we did the California thing. Uh, <laughs> well, you can rent them. I can. Um. So when I ski, when I go in, and I'm, you know, I want a beer. That's what I drink when I go in. But I would drink something like this. To, it's refreshing. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it's it sitting. To me. I can see it sitting on an evening, actually, like tonight, because it's not so cold here tonight, mm -hmm. um, with a nice little fire pit and sitting there. I can mm -hmm. see that. I can get it. I'm feeling it. Which leads us into food pairings. Thanks to the high acidity that Jackia has, it pretty much pairs with anything. So it actually, not necessarily the, the flavor profile, but the concept of the high acidity, the crispness of it and that, it reminds me of like a sparkling. Like, you know, champagne can go with so many different things. And this, with the acidity, can also go with a whole bunch of other things. So... Green apples, um, walnuts, Thai salad, peanut Thai salad, and the so difficult to pair a gosh darn wine with avocado. It's like you, this will go with an avocado. So it's like, I don't know. Avocados are one of the most difficult fruit, uh, difficult foods to pair a wine with and Bam! Here you go. This is this is a suggestion for you. Okay. All right. This thing, I 
I don't know, but it kind of sounds intriguing to me. Um, that looks really good. Right? Um, but I don't know is that... I could make that. Yeah. What's, so, what's Revolution cheese? Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm, I think it's like a, um, um, but when you look at the cheese in there, it looks like it's more like a regatte type thing, but more, um, what's, what's the other word for, for the healthier cream cheese? Um, nif, nif or yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it kind of looks like. Um, but this is a tartiflet. I'm guessing. I don't know how to really pronounce it. Um, but, I mean, you kind of can't go wrong. Potatoes, bacon, you know, like, can't go wrong. Well, first of all, anything with bacon in it is good. But And I'm it, starving right now because I have yet to eat. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But it does, right? I mean, bacon, cheese, double ah. cream. It's not exactly the healthiest thing on oh, the face it, of the earth. But it... This it'll cut through all that it'll be nice yes and this this popped up all over the place for the Savoie region so they weren't claiming that it is the food of the region but if you put in Savoie this is the meal that comes up so uh, I am actually I'm going to have to give it a try because it really does look good but I do need I to I think we gotta get together and make that because that looks really good okay deal deal all right um i have to research what the actual cheese is um because i'm not getting that anywhere near me um i'm guessing but um we i'm sure i'm sure yeah, i'm sure mark I, i'm sure uh, mike can come up with a suggestion uh to uh -huh. to uh whatchamacallit replace it okay eggplant parmesan okay i don't do that but I get it. Um, I can see how it pairs with it. Um, so um, I, I think any type of lasagna, stuffed shells, anything like that is going to go with this. But I think the... Maybe because of the acidity, it'll cut through the tomato acidity? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Again, not we'll touching try. this. Uh, smoked trout. Um, that is... Uh, that stuff is good. No, 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 not, not on my plate, not in my mouth. Blah! Yuck. Okay. Get Mary to make that. Yeah, no, no, not happening, not happening. This is why I have difficulty explaining things, because I don't eat anything. Um, but yeah, no, smoked trout, not happening. But again, understanding what it is, I think it would pair perfectly with this wine. I think it would go great with smoked trout. Yep. Yep. And the number one food pairing with Jacquier, cheese fondue. Ah, oh, my favorite. Cheese fondue. In fact, the origi origins of cheese fondue can be found in Switzerland and France, the Rhone Alps, which is exactly where this wine is found. So as the saying goes, drink like eat like right or however that saying actually is right um so you know it's not surprising that fondue is in there as the number one pairing uh the savoyard uh cheese never heard of that cheese either but um savoyard cheese actually comes from the Haute savoie region so you can't ask for more than that. You're getting cheese from wow. the exact region that the wine is coming from. It's going to go together. Oh, that's a match made in heaven. Yeah, yeah. So that is the food pairings. I love fondue. Cheese Do you fondue. know I have never actually had, like, fondue ever? Really? Like, they have yeah, those I'm melting pot stores restaurants. and stuff, or restaurants and stuff. I've never gone to one of those. I've never... Really? No, because we had fondue, cheese fondue at wine night one night, and we had four different types of cheese fondues. Oh. Like, Anne made four different types of cheese fondues and cheese fondue pots. Oh, my God, it was so good. So here's here's the reason why, here's the reason why I show you my little, my quirkiness. I like to call it quirkiness. Um, 
it kind of freaks me out that you're just going to stick your food in the cheese and then pull your food out like and eat it and then I'm going to stick my food in the cheese. No, and, well, you put it on your plate and you eat it with a fork. Yeah, but I've never seen anybody do that. Whenever I've seen fondue, people are just sticking it in there. It's like I don't I don't you know it's like double dipping. I'm not in, I'm not into the double dipping scene. I can't do it, you know. Well, I have to get you a little pot and just have their own little pot. Give me my own little cheese fondue and we're good. And then the other thing is is people put things in that like I don't eat and then that freaks me out. Like if you're going to put a food in that I don't eat, then it's in that cheese and I don't know. It's like Yeah, but it doesn't take on the flavor. It doesn't matter. I know it's in there. It's quirkiness of mine. No, I it's like in there. To roll up salami and put it in the cheese fondue and then little pieces no see little pieces of food are in there i can't i can't i can't i can't i can't i can't food food and me really don't get along i'm very you know i it's not that i eat healthy no by far no you know i am the processed queen of the world you know give me a pop tart give me a hot pocket and i'm oh a happy God, camper I grew up on pop tarts <laughs> but i can't house they have pop tarts all right i'm good i'm good chocolate fudge and i am in heaven yes, man yes. but I, I i now like the vanilla ones better oh no i i'll eat them i'll eat them and then and then the other thing is well not that you do that but like the the it's kind of the same thing with the chocolate fountain i can't deal with the chocolate fountain because people just shove their food in the chocolate fountain no, or whatever. i've never had a chocolate fountain oh i can't do that plus the big thing is strawberries in the chocolate fountain, and then I'll end up in a hospital because I'm deathly allergic to strawberries. No. Um, but yeah, the the the, sh the dipping thing freaks me out. I can't I can't do it. I can't do it. So no cheese fondue unless you're gonna give me my own little cheese fondue little pot. Then I'm good. I'll give it a shot because I love cheese. You're funny. I love <laughs> cheese too. Oh my and god. And quirky. <laughs> quirky. So should we go into the five fun facts? Absolutely. So <gasps> look at that. That's beautiful. That Jack here is known as the Muscadet of the Mountain. And I'll steal that and put that on Instagram tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and it thrives in clay limestone stone and rocky soil. Oh. Um, it's grown in the Condro um Condre area, you. That, what was it? Uh, I think it's Condra U. A Condra U vineyards, but it's not officially allowed to be used in any AOP wine. See now that I gotta go back to that. Like, I don't. But I want to know what do they do with it? I I guess they sell it off. That's, I don't know. I'm going to my resident. I'm going to my resident. Uh, son, you know wine specialist Nick and I'm going to ask him that. I don't know. I don't get it how you can grow how it grows so well in a region that you grow it but then it's not allowed to be in the region. So Yeah. So production has also begun on this very small scale in Portugal where it's known as Molet de Mont Montmelea or Martin Cot. Yes, I saw the Martin Cot. When I was looking up for the letter M, Daddy. when what? I was looking up for the letter M, I found Martin God. <laughs> <laughs> so then I got the Who's Your Daddy, but you said that um, its daddy is uh, Gross. Louis yes. Blanc. Yep. But I thought that, you know, that was the mother. So. Oh, well, you anyway. know what? I call everybody the daddy. I, I call everybody. I don't know. It's When it's two white grapes, it's tough. You know, I, I don't, yeah. I, I'm, I, this is so bad. I shouldn't say, it, but I'm, I like racist with, or, or not racist, uh, with the word with grapes. If it's a red grape, I like, I don't know. I call the daddy red. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I was like, who's your daddy? <laughs> yeah. It's always, who's your so daddy? That part of, one of the genes is the Goliath Blanc and the other is an thought to be. An unknown French origin. Right. I don't know. So, you know, it's floating around and it's giving us the last laugh and it's, you know, going, ha ha, they can't figure me out. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll figure it out eventually. Well, we won't, yeah. but somebody will. Somebody will. Some, some mad scientists will. Yes. Yes. So, so uh, mm. 
I am enjoying this very thoroughly. I'm not. I am too. I'm not upset with the 9.99. So, as we finish our glass, uh, where are we going next? Where are we going next? Next, we're going to go to uh, K for cabinet, and we'll explore more or less. I mean, we had a hard time trying to find a K, so uh, we'll explore the different um, variations of of the German um, sweetness levels, I guess, would, right. would be the easiest right. thing to say. So uh, we're going to explore the Cabinet Grape. And, you and know, I was trying to figure this out. Here. And Do you, um, there is a, uh, I don't know what it's called. Um, like, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally um, or Roy Jabiv. There's some, there's some term for that. Do you know what that's called? Okay. No. Okay. Um, but there is something to help you remember the levels of the German, you know, where cabinet fits in there. Right. Do you know that? Do you remember that? Thing? No. No? I, I know what you're talking about, though. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think, I, I don't know. I've got to find out what that is. Um, but cabinet, without doing any research whatsoever, um, is more along the sweeter lines, correct? No, it's the driest. It's the driest? It is driest. Well, that's good for me because I don't want sure. the sweet stuff. I don't want sweet stuff. I'm pretty sure it's the driest. And I have I have my cabinet because I ordered my cabinet when I ordered my check here. Yes, I have. I have. So we can talk about this because I think we both have them. So we have cabinet coming up for K. Right. We have Lambrusco for L. We and have Mencia, which is Spanish. Um, yes. Okay. For from from the Galicia region, which I didn't even know oh. until I hopped on some chat okay. on Wednesday. And I kind of promised Ryan that we would do Nebbiolo okay, for that's N. Fine. For N. So. Okay. I might have a Nebbiolo in my wine cellar. So, so that is what we're doing. I'll have to check. So. so that's what's coming up on Wine for Bed Street. Yes. And um, our Cabinet next date is, is, Cabinet is? April 16th. April 16th. Perfect. Yes. I will remember that because it will be before we go back on the Wine, wine Riders, riders Wrap-Up, wrap which will be the 23rd. I'm telling you, that threw me so off. And I remember getting up today going, i got to start working on Cabinet. Mm -hmm. And then I started saw your postings on Wine for Best Street. What is she doing? We did that last week. And I was like, totally, totally. Yeah. But I'm excited about the Wine Riders Wrap-Up next month also because we are talking wine etiquette. So the That's do's good. and don'ts of wine etiquette. I got a lot etiquette. to say on that. Yeah, this is this is gonna be this is gonna be a rapid fire one. So yeah. yes, it's I going have to... a whole my book. I have a whole um, area on wine etiquette. All right, we'll have to reference that in uh, in next month uh, yeah. next uh, wine writers wrap up. But so we are all done. And I hope I think we are all done. I think that wraps up. Yeah. And I just want to put the link in for Wink. The link in for Wink. The Wink in for Wink. The link in for Wink. Wink is our sponsor. Yes. And uh, that's the link. The link for Wink. Wink. So once again, it is trywink.com forward slash winefabet. Get $20 off of your first order. And that pretty much gives you four bottles of wine delivered to your door for $30-ish. We will see you next month. Yes, but you didn't mention April our website. 20th. Oh, that's right. We have this great website, uh, winefabetstreet.com. There we go. You can watch all, your, all the episodes that you've missed, and you can register for all our upcoming episodes. So and you can register once, right? We can. They, you can register just once, and you'll be registered for all of them. If you, you know, you have to. I think there's an option to choose that. Right. So, and even if you can't make it and you register, you'll always get the repeat, the re, the replay. I think that's 
that that's wraps it. up. That's a wrap. So that's a wrap. <laughs> Elmo <laughs> says good night and slancha. Thanks for listening to Dracina Wines Podcast. If you have suggestions on what topics you would like us to discuss, please reach out to us on social media. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat, Google, and Periscope as at Dracina Wines. I am also on LinkedIn as Lori Hoyt Bud, or email us at DracinaWines.com. If you enjoyed our podcast, please subscribe and leave us a review on your favorite podcast catcher to help others find us more easily. We are found on all of your favorite aggregators. To subscribe easily,